give thanks for all that is. Give praise, give praise, give praise, give praise, give praise. like this day so let's give praise now say la say la say la say la say la Perseverance and it's a spirit that sees uh, beyond the reality. 
So we're also especially delighted to welcome Minister Charlene Moore, who's at the keyboard. She is a long time there, a gospel artist, a recorder, singer, all kinds of things. She served for many years as the Minister of Music at City of Refuge, United Church of Christ, and she has played virtually all over, uh, not just the Bay Area, but the United States and the world. Mm -hmm. So we're really honored um, to have her here with us. We're also honored to have Minister Rusty Watson, who is one of our to help us with our music. So I want to thank you all. Thank you both for being here. So let's rise as you're willing and able to sing, lift every voice and sing, um, which was many, many times known as the African American National Anthem. It was written by James Bowen Johnson and Jay Rosalind Johnson. They actually wrote it, I believe, in 1905. It was for a celebration of Lincoln's birthday at a small school in Jacksonville, Florida. So it uh, became the anthem of the, the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored That's what we were at that time. <laughs> so uh, please let's rise and Yeah. Uh -huh. 
True to our native land, for your hearing and doing. Psalms 137, four through six, the Passion Translation. But how could we sing the song of the Lord in this foreign wilderness? May my hands never make music again, if I ever forget you, O Africa. May I never be able to sing again, if I fail to honor my African homelands and ancestors supremely. In a 2017 article by the Reverend Dante C. Stewart, he reflects on the words of Dr. Howard Thurman about the meaning and power of Negro or African-American spirituals. He wrote the following, touching on the meaning of the Negro spiritual, Howard Thurman gave a lecture in 1947. The Negro spiritual speaks of life and death. Many during that time, and even today, argued that spirituals were too otherworldly and made the slaves detach from their present suffering, thus make, making them hopelessly submit under the yoke of bondage. However, Thurman powerfully countered, what greater tribute could be paid to a religious faith in general and to the slaves' religious faith in particular than this? It taught a people how to ride high to life, to look squarely in the face of the facts that argue most dramatic, dramatically against all hope, and to use those very same facts as raw materials out of which they fashioned hope that the environment, with all its cruelty, could not and would not crush. What evokes so much joy and suffering, triumph and pain, endurance in the darkness, and a hope that the environment could not crush. <laughs> Thurman argues it was a some faith which enabled them to reject annihilation, reject annihilation and affirm a terrible right to live and for life. Though rightfully celebrated as a musical genre that has been instrumental historically and literally, Thurman proposed that he believes the greatest contribution is what the spirituals have given us theologically. In the spirituals, you hear a people who know and knew they God. God was not seen as distant or separated from their reality, but he was the almighty God, heavenly father, the one and the only. He was a God, as Thurman shares, who was a companion to them in their miseries, even as he enabled them to transcend those same miseries. God was seen as sovereign over all, over all of creation, yet working in the lives of his people. S significantly, given the deplorable conditions of slavery, the slave sung, sometimes I feel like a motherless child, but could, could affirm with complete and whole assurance that God keeps his promises. I'm trying to be good right now. As one song shared, the whole creation, the whole creation, all his own, his love and power will prevail Promises will never fail, saying, God is God, God don't ever change. God has also seen and was also seen as a God whose promises were mostly clearly seen and fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus in the spirituals was the suffering servant, reigning king, and very close friend. He was the one who had nowhere to lay his head, born in a manger. Anyway, that's oh, love Jesus, and was the crucified savior of his people. Amen and amen. 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 So in that spirit, we're going to sing a couple of spirituals. Uh, the choir, why don't y'all come on up with the choir if you have it. Um, hold on, keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. And uh, then ain't gonna let nobody turn you. Uh, you can, if you want to, you may rise. This is not a very sitting still. 
Yeah, but I'm already busted the legs, busted the back, hands, everything. When she come here, she ain't had nothing left to make no living with. Besides her heart. Baby Sugs used to preach right here. Let the children come. <laughs> Let your mothers hear you laugh. children see you dead. Greetings, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. This reading is from the words of Octavia Butler, the first American female science fiction writer who is described as the mother of Afrofuturism. You got to make your own worlds. You got to write yourself in. Hmm. Whether you were a part of the greater society or not, you got to write yourself in. In a 1999 journal entry, Butler reflected on her literary journey, saying, I never bought into my invisibility <laughs> or non existence as a black person. As a female, and as an African-American, I wrote myself into the world. I wrote myself into the present, the future, and the past. Thank you. 
I am not Barb Craft. Oh, Barb Craft, and Barb has lost the connection. So we gonna pitch it real quick for Beauty in the Mundane. Cole Arthur Riley from Black Liturgies. God of everything, beautiful, of every beautiful thing. Make us people of wonder. Show us how to hold onto the nuance and vision when our souls become addicted to pain, to the unlovely. It is far easier to see the gloom and decay. So often it sings a louder song. Attune our hearts to the good still stirring in our midst not that we could give ourselves to toxic positivity or neglect the pain of the world, but that we would hope be people capable of existing in the tension. Grant us habits of sacred pause. Let us marvel not just at the grand or majestic, but beauty's name etched into every ordinary moment. Let the mundane swell with the mystery that makes us breathe deeper still. And by this, may we be sustained and kept from despair. Amen.
thing sometimes we do is what we must do. We're going to see a future and we leave for a future that's greater than our present. Uh, Shirley, can you just play a little bit more of that if you will only trust me? Just the refrain. Thank <laughs> you. 
song that inspires me to imagine and believe for a better future, a future where all can thrive. And uh, what we want to invite you into now is to, I think we're going to talk it out. I don't see any uh, journals here today. Um, but just turn to your neighbor and share your feelings. What songs inspire you uh, to imagine and believe? for a better future, a place where no children have to cry anymore from hunger or fear of the war, where all children and all people are celebrated just as they are. So share with each other for a few minutes what songs inspire you.
you're sharing good songs, why don't you call out some of the names of the songs that, that inspire you? Cambia, todo cambia. Amen. Something cambia. <laughs> Everything changes. Cambia, okay. Other songs? Cambia, God. <laughs> the impossible dream, yes. Amazing grace. Oh, happy day. Something inside so strong. So songs can really, really accompany us. Um, I tell this story sometime. I have one of my uncles who was like 101 when he passed. Uh, by that time, he had uh, dementia, significant dementia, and so we went to visit him. He did not really know who we were. He couldn't speak it, but he started singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Because songs are lodged in a different place in our memory, and sometimes when other things fail us, the music will be there. So at this time, we're going to have Matthew come and share with us the work of the people. Thank you. Continue to sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs and encouragement. going to share from my, my group is uh, some of the songs where God helped the outcasts. Mm -hmm. And it's, sometimes it's hard to remember the, the title of the songs, but the, the feelings um, that came up with my um, partners were uh, the reminders of our mission to seek the truth. And then one of my favorites is, is the song Bridges. And part of the lyrics is building bridges and not walls. Mm -hmm out of the same rocks. <laughs> so, an upcoming event, actually, is tomorrow. We have our, our very own Reverend Ann and Reverend Kamal Hassan in our first Wednesday edition of the online cafe, tomorrow at 4 o'clock to 5.15. And it's in theme of what we just reflected, reflected on, which is thriving and belonging. And uh, right now, the garden, because of the weather, uh, it's very uh, uh, weather dependent activity. But we are tending to this garden uh, through our Thrive Journals. So, uh, thank you for the uh, chapel committee for providing some feedback because we might not be all on the same page of what Thrive means. So part of the work of the people is to reflect on what that means for you and, and write it down and it may evolve over time. And so some of the, the definitions of Thrive is to flourish and grow. So in reflection of those two words, we, we are always inviting you to reflect how are you growing, how are you flourishing. And the second terminology that we're inviting folks to reflect on is, what is your right number? <laughs> Words are powerful and so are numbers. You know, what is your growth and flourish number, number from a scale of one to 10? 10 being you are growing and you are flourishing, and one, you are feeling like you need some help in growing. So where are you? What is your current right number? And that may shift over time. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. And we'll see you where you are next next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> next slide. All right, so we have Andrew Barnes, our very own Andrew Barnes in Oakland for his farewell concert. It's featuring the following folks. Uh, Carl Evangelista, Vanessa Murphy, our very own Minister Rusty Watson, Dr. Candace Johnson,
Brent Romas and others to be announced so we can go and support them. So my vision is not that. <laughs> it's at 3 p.m. February 11th, Sunday at City of Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to have them make an announcement? Yes, there's the Thrive question. Yes, here are the Thrive questions. How are you thriving? Do you have a Thrive partner? So the number that I just asked everyone to invite everyone to reflect on could be dependent on your Thrive partner. It could be a Thrive partner in PSR or a Thrive partner outside of PSR. It could be both. And then Thrive number and your Thrive journal. Keep it simple as I heard what I heard from my, like, our chapel committee. So I made this really complex like survey <laughs> on Google Docs. But hey, my, my current Thrive journal is the bulletin board. I also brought my own Thrive journal. So I, I, wrote, I wrote it down. It could be my phone. It could be anywhere that you can write. Uh, next slide, please. You know, for the Ignite platform, does anyone like to say anything about Ignite? We'll have a special announcement in just a few weeks for an introduction for Change Happening Now, the podcast, which is entering season seven with our beloved Maurice Smoky, who is in his capstone right now, journeying through a multi city pathway, taking us on a pilgrimage. So, the first half of our season of this next uh, uh, journey with him is really found through our conversations with some of the top to new people, um, and that will be half of the season. So it's exciting, but it's still preliminary. We're in pre-production mode as we started this journey this week. Do you want to go to the next uh, coming to you? And I also want to thank Jeanette, because she has uploaded the archive of all the chapel services from our session. Sorry. I want to say thank you to Jeanette for uploading and archiving all of our chapel services from last semester. If you want to see what happened, go to the platform. Yeah, <laughs> and just real quick to recap what, um, what was shared. Uh, Mo is, is launching his pilgrimage as part of the uh, Change Happens Now. So we're cheering you on, Mo. Um, and also, part of the, the Thrive uh, theme is actually Thrive Tuesdays to remind you to journal where you are in those following questions. And in line with, with Ignite, we have Ignite Mondays, which is to remind you to visit the Ignite platform and check out the latest postings. Thrive, uh, Thrive Tuesdays and Ignite Mondays. And for Wednesday, <laughs> I will get these up next time. So our Asian American Pacific Islander Roundtable with Mage Mai is offering tomorrow, and they're a great presenter. Dancing Lions, Queer Asian Aesthetics, Ritual, and Movements Building. That's online at 1 p.m. Just go to the CLGES.org website. Well, thanks to everyone for beautiful music today and a chance to really center and gather ourselves. Um, as we think of this theme, I, a couple weeks ago, I was visiting my son in Washington, D.C. I think it was to Howard University, and we went to the Museum of African American History, and there's a section of Afrofuturism in the museum that is quite remarkable. There's a quote in there from uh, a, from author, a science fiction author, N.K. Jemison, that says, I think one of the most radical things anyone in this world can do is imagine that black people have a future. Mm -hmm. I think that the realities of the ways that much of our world uh, really deprives ourselves, our communities, of a sense of the future and our picture in it. So thank you for the work to remind us today of that and uh, to create really the possibility that the communities we come from, the communities we seek to serve, have a future, that our planet has a future. Mm -hmm. There is a desperate need for that courage mm -hmm. to be shared. And we are delighted that PSR has a bright future, <laughs> and that it has much to do with the commitments and investments of many. This coming Tuesday, our Board of Trustees will gather uh, virtually. This is a virtual meeting of the Board, 
At PSR, we do a very particular thing. Our board of trustees is completely open to the entire community. So faculty, staff, students should have received last week our entire docket. Pretty much that's what the board gathers to reflect on. And it includes uh, reports from every area of our institution. And so I encourage you to browse through it. It's a nice, thick docket. It's all digital, but there's lots in there from uh, finances to the realities of our programmatic efforts and where we're advancing our mission. And we make this available to everyone and invite you to come to the board meeting. Again, it's virtual. What you'll see is a, a reminder will go out on Monday to everyone, but it's in the docket where you can link. It's basically a Zoom link. When you come and participate as observers of the board meeting, uh, you'll be invited to you know, listen in, and so keep the screen up and, the, and be muted, uh, because it's really to observe the, the proceedings of the board meeting. But I encourage you to take some time as you're able to on Monday, uh, the meeting will run from 9 a.m. to about 8 12. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to sing some rousing stuff to dance if you want to. I just want to say, um, I want to say out loud that. Um, just keep each other in prayer, yes? Professor Glenn, we love you. And you keep me doing prayer as you go through things with your life. Yeah. So, anyone else, you know, a lot of times we walk in places and there's a lot we may be carrying inside of it and we're not actually saying it out loud. So just pray for one another, because you never know what somebody is doing. So we want to invite you to rise as you're willing and able. Let's sing this classic song from the Park Sisters I'm looking for. Here, I expect the impossible, I feel the intangible, I see the invisible, because the sky is the limit to what I can have. All right. I'm looking for a miracle.
sorry. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be broadcast the evening of um, Monday, February 12th. This is a documentary on gospel music with Earl Lewis Gates. You'll see some familiar faces in this clip trailer. From the blues to hip hop, African Americans have driven sonic innovation for more than a century. While styles have changed, there's one sound that's remained constant a source of strength and courage, comfort and wisdom. Gospel. That's a little bit of gospel. Gospel music is soul. Gospel music is R&B. Gospel music is funk. It's hip hop. Gospel music is the full spectrum in terms of its sound of black music and beyond. Mahalia Jackson, mm -hmm. what was special about her voice? She believed every word she was singing, mm -hmm. and she wanted you to believe it. Preachers have style, right. gospel singers have style. Right. Black style in music and preaching is similar because it allows black people to believe that they can survive a bit longer. My mother had gone to New Bethel Baptist Church. C.O. Franklin would preach and then Aretha would sing. Oh my God, if you ain't got the spirit then, you dead. The sermon becomes the song. The song becomes the sermon. Somebody. It's almost as if there's a soundtrack in a church setting. Amen, brother. That was beautiful. For generations, gospel music and preaching have formed the bedrock of the black religious experience. The sound still connects people. The sound still gathers people. These astonishing art forms, caring and enduring tradition, continue to evolve. Do you think there will always be gospel music 100 years from now? I don't see how we can thrive without gospel music. That's right. I say it's going to always be there forever. Listen, as we tell the story of how a people learn to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. This is the powerful story of gospel.